All right, what is up guys? We're back out at the jetty, trying something different. Not only are we crab snaring, but we're like, what do you call this, poke poling or drop shot poke poling? What would you call it? We'll call it jetty jigging, how about that? Jetty jigging, two rod maximum from any structure in California. That's why we're gonna have one rod soaking for snares and one rod for our jetty jigging. So I have this snare here. This was given to me by Big E. So we're gonna cast this in. I got chicken and sardines. Gonna cast it out that way. And uh, while that's soaking, we're gonna go over here, meet up with uh, Chris and uh, learn about his jetty jigging techniques. All right, now that we have our two crab snare soaking, it's time to jetty jig. And if you guys don't know who this is, this is Chris. He goes by Chris Fish Dish. He has an awesome channel. And I like to consider him the other sushi chef, the sushi chef that you don't know about. He has a specific technique to pull monkey face eels out of the jetty without a poke pole. And if you notice, we have a heavy to medium heavy bass rods here uh, with like 50 pound braid or so. And his custom, jigging setup which is actually pretty cool so it consists of a torpedo weight with a squid skirt an open sidewash hook and uh, a squid head so with the action and the scent of the squid if you're a monkey face eel if this plops right down on your head how can you not i have never really had luck poke pulling but uh, i'm going to give jetty jigging a shot and uh, yeah do you want to tell us uh, where we're fishing uh, so when i'm fishing for monkey face eels i'm looking for these holes there on the edge of the jetty if they're not there within couple minutes just move over to another spot and if there's one keep keep going the most likely there'll be another one right in there I've caught three in the same hole one time if anything I, I always look for the kelp beds because that's their main diet anyway you know the squid comes around that's just candy to them yeah baby yeah baby keeper oh yeah that's a keeper Yeah, baby. Yeah. Dungy. Hell yeah, dude. I think that's a keeper too. All right, guys. We're on the board. So we have two Dungeness crabs. Great example of the difference between a male and a female. So we have the male here. This is, the whole shell is called the carapace. And part of the carapace is this apron. And uh, females, or males, have the skinnier one kind of like a, you know what? And the females have a wider one and they have this wider one because they actually hang onto their egg sac when they're spawning and they have uh, eggs on them. So to measure them in California, you have to have a dungeness um, crab gauge or a crab gauge on you. So when you're on the jetty or structure, like a pier or jetty, you don't need a license, but you do have to have a crab gauge in your possession if you have a crab in possession. And to measure, we're gonna go across the back Boom, six and a quarter, decent sized male. One of the most orange crabs I think I've ever seen. This is the one that uh, Chris just caught. We'll measure this guy here, across the back, five and just over three quarters. So technically she's legal. Now, I prefer to keep males because, well, when, you know, the females do uh, add to the population, of course, uh, you want them to be able to spawn and, and uh, go through their cycles and be able to provide more crabs in the future. But males typically have more meat uh, in their shells for whatever reason. I think it's primarily because females convert a lot of their energy into uh, reproduction. So we're gonna keep both of them in the bucket. If I catch a male Dungeons crab, crab that's a keeper, I'm gonna return her. But for now, legally, uh, I'm going to recognize my legal right to take her uh, just in case I don't catch any bigger males uh, moving forward. So let's put, put these in the bucket, work on fishing and uh, see if we can add to the dish today. All right, super stoked to have those crabs in the bucket. Now to add to the dish, to let Chris make what he needs to make today, we need a monkey face eel or a good sized rockfish. And uh, to do that, we're gonna have to keep jetty jigging, working our way up and down the rocks. I made the mistake earlier of sticking my line down into one of these deep dark holes and the current snagged me up and he was like, no, don't do that. If you're gonna be jetty jigging, actually cast uh, towards the exterior of the interior side of the jetty because that's what his technique is really designed for so we're going to keep at it keep uh keep plugging away we still have a lot of time to hopefully put something on the line to add to this dish and uh, keep watching because ish with fish and chris fish dish about to make something delish that you wish you had on your dish <laughs> Rockfish! Yeah! Hell yeah! Yeah! My first 
jetty jigging caught fish, little brown rockfish, I believe. Now he's tiny, he's a juvenile, and uh, you can catch much bigger ones out in the reef. But because of what we're doing today, I'm gonna throw this guy in a live well and hang on to him uh, until I catch something bigger. If not, Chris said he could definitely turn him into something pretty cool. So we're gonna hang on to this guy, keep him alive, and then uh, come back to this spot and uh, see if we can catch something a little bigger. Boom, got him. Hell yeah. A little bit bigger, not as big as Chris's, but yes. What is that? What kind of fish is that? Is that a little, uh, right, so it looks like a maybe a little copper? Something like that? Boom, I knew there was somebody in here. Put some fresh bait, a little patience. Got him. All right, I have a crab. Coming back to my little jetty spot to jetty jig and checking my rod just in case. Oh, 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 that's some weight. Oh, that's some weight. Ow. Oh, I put the rod between my legs and now my, I'm paying for it. Gotta get him to the surface. Don't want him dragging along the bottom. Oh, 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 okay. Oh man, hopefully there's a keeper in all this mess. Oh, 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 oh. Dude, 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 oh my god, one cast, bro, keeper dungeons, huge rock crab, and a little female, damn, dude, look at the size of that rock crab, dude, look at that triple insanity, man, the little e-snare, I'm telling you, the snare, the snares are magic, and he doesn't sell them. Eric, you need to sell your snares. Or don't sell them and give them to me. Boom. Six and a half. Keep this guy. No claws, but he's heavy. Right about seven. So massive, massive, massive red rock crab. Dungeous crab. This is what I came for right here. Woo! And I got some fish to boot. Heck yeah, man. Good day. Good day. Well, we've come to the best part. Dude, it was an epic morning. Not only did I catch my first jetty jig fish, multiple fish, uh, I caught some awesome crabs. I think I had the best jetty day crabbing and fishing in a long time. This is the first time I caught, I think, a triple uh, with multiple keepers. So that was that was pretty that was nuts. That was, that was pretty cool. That was crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised my rod didn't break. Well, after all of that, Chris did his thing. He worked his magic, and boom! Tell us what we have. Uh, you know what? Out of that one dungeon that I caught earlier, we were able to get enough meat to uh, make two California rolls and another roll with the deep fried rockfish on top also. Yeah, he caught a pretty awesome rockfish. I mean, the thing was big. I mean, it was definitely a keeper, you know, charter-wise, let alone pulling it out from the rock. So I'll let you guys check out that catch on his channel. And uh, man, you ready to dig in? Let's go, man. Let's this go. Let's do good. it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna take go our it. wasabi relish. He said it's better than the powdered kind. So he says take a little piece, put it right on the tobiko. Exactly, start on top. Especially if you uh, love wasabi, you're definitely gonna love wasabi. All right, here we go. The first first bite right here, fresh caught rockfish and Dungeons Crab from the Half Moon Bay Jetty. Yeah. Here we go. Woo! A good kick to it, huh? Oh yeah. 
That was probably sticking it in for sure. Man, it's like a fresh, hot taste. And gets you like on either side of the tongue. All right, we're gonna dig into the California rolls now. All right. Go right over here. Now, am I allowed? I know the lemon's here for garnish, but am I allowed to, to sprinkle some on? Hey man, do whatever you want. That's you right. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's goddamn right. Take the lemon, little spritz. Yes, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Wow. That is not imitation crab. It's been a long time since I've had a California roll with real Dungeons crab. That's the first time I've ever had one with fresh caught Dungeons crab right here in the Pacific Ocean. Man, dude. Ooh, and that avocado is like fresh too. <laughs> Yes. Dang. Cheers. Thanks you guys for joining. If you guys want to see more awesome sushi and Japanese style uh, cooking and beyond, check out Chris's channel, Chris Fish Dish. I'm going to leave a link in the end screen as well as the description below. He not only does sushi on the jetty, but he does it everywhere, man. Yeah. If you guys want to see fresh caught stuff and uh, fresh uh, Japanese style cooking and more, he's the man right here. Chris yep. Fish Dish. Thank you guys for watching. We're gonna go finish this and we'll see you guys in the next one.